Good morning, children. Hey, today I'm going to read you a story and it is about a really kind giant. It's one of my absolute favourites. It'll make you laugh as well. You have to listen out for the rhymes. Now it's called The Smartest Giant in Town and it's by Julia Donaldson. George was a giant, the scruffiest giant in town. He always wore the same pair of old brown sandals and the same old patched up gown. I wish I wasn't the scruffiest giant in town, he said sadly. Look at his clothes and his face is really sad, isn't he? One day, George noticed a new shop. It was full of smart clothes. So he bought a smart shirt, a smart pair of trousers, a smart belt, a smart stripy tie, some smart socks, with diamonds up the sides and a pair of smart, shiny shoes. Now I am the smartest giant in town, he said proudly. George left his old clothes behind in the shop. He was about to go home when he heard a sound. On the pavement stood a giraffe was sniffing sadly. What's the matter? asked George. It's my neck, said the giraffe. It's so very long and so very cold. I wish I had a long warm scarf. up said George and he took off his stripy tie it didn't match my socks anyway he said as he wound it round and round the giraffe's neck it made a wonderful scarf oh thank you said the giraffe as George strode home he sang to himself my tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe but look at me up and down I'm the smartest giant in town. George came to a river. On the boat stood a goat who was bleating loudly. What's the matter? asked George. It's my sail, said the goat. It blew away in a storm. I wish I had a strong new sail for my boat. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his new white shirt. It kept coming untucked anyway, he said, and he tied it to the mast of the goat's boat. It made a magnificent sail. Thank you, said the goat. George strode on singing to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. But look me up and down. I'm the smartest giant in town. George came to a tiny, ruined house. Beside the house stood a white mouse with lots of baby mice. They were all squeaking. What's the matter? asked George. It's our house, squeaked the mother mouse. It burned down and now we have nowhere to live. I wish we had a nice new house. 
And look at those poor mice. Look at their house burned down too. Cheer up, said George, and he took off one of his shiny shoes. It was giving me blisters anyway, he said, as the mouse and her baby scrambled inside. The shoe made a perfect home for them. Thank you, they squeaked. Look at them in their new house. It's a fantastic house for mice, isn't it? George had to hop along the road now, but he didn't mind. As he hopped, he sang to himself, My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. But look me up and down. I'm the smartest giant in town. George came to a campsite. Behind us, beside a tent, stood a fox who was crying. What's the matter? asked George. It's my sleeping bag, said the fox. I dropped it in a puddle. I wish I had a warm, dry sleeping bag. Cheer up, said George, and he took off one of his socks with diamonds up the sides. It was tickling my toes. Anyway, he said, as the fox snuggled into it, it made a very fine sleeping bag. Thank you, said the fox. George hopped on, singing to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of my socks is a bed for a fox. But look me up and down. I'm the smartest giant in town. George came to a big squelchy bog. Beside the bog stood a dog who was howling. What's the matter? asked George. It's this bog, said the dog. I need to get across but I keep getting stuck in the mud. I wish there was a dry safe path. wonder what George is going to do now. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his smart new belt. It was squishing my tummy anyway, he said, as he, as he laid it down over the bog. It made an excellent path. Thank you, said the dog. Can you see he's walking along the belt? The wind started to blow, but George didn't mind. He hopped on singing, my tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of my socks is a bed for a fox. My belt held a dog who was crossing a bog, but... My trousers! are falling down <gasps> I'm the coldest giant in town oh my goodness look at him suddenly George felt sad and shivery and not at all smart he stood on one foot and thought I'll have to go back to the shop and buy some more clothes he turned round and hopped all the way back to the shop. But when he got there, it was closed. Oh no. Oh no, cried George. He sank down on the doorstep and a tear ran down his nose. He felt as sad as all the animals he had met on his way home. 
Then out of the corner of his eye, he saw a bag with something familiar poking out of the top. George took a closer look. My gown, he yelled. My dear old gown and sandals. George put them on. They felt wonderfully comfortable. I'm the coziest giant in town, he cried. And he danced back home along the road. <laughs> Outside his front store stood all the animals he had helped. They were carrying an enormous present. Come on, George, they said, open it. George untied the ribbon. Inside, there was a beautiful gold paper crown and a card. Look inside the card, George, said the animals. George put the crown on his head and opened the card. Inside, it said... Your tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. Your shirt on a boat as a sail for a goat. Your shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of your socks is a bed for a fox. Your belt held a dog who was crossing a bog. So here is a very fine crown to go with the sandals and gown of the kindest giant in town. I love that letter that they wrote, don't you? And the pictures that they drew. Maybe you could write a letter. Or maybe you could make a crown, just like the giant. Bye.